All right, guys, Abel here back with another video. And in this one, I want to talk about the topic of what makes us fat. And more specifically, I want to refine this a little bit more by rather asking the question, why do we overeat? What is it that makes us overeat? Which I think is a more relevant question to ask. I'm not so interested in discussing whether overeating is really making us fat. I think that's quite a redundant point to discuss at this point. But the question of why do we overeat is really the million dollar question in my opinion. And just for some context, the recent video that I published on my channel, which was a review on the debate that took place between Gary Taubes and Dr. Stephen Guiennet on the Joe Rogan podcast, some of the comments under that video, I think are really well illustrating one of the biggest problems that I think we have in the discussions we are having in fitness circles, which is we are so hyper fixated on macronutrients, you know, carbs, fats, protein. This is all we talk about. And a lot of the comments that were posted under this video that I published two days ago, a lot of people were saying things like carbs are not satiating, carbs are what make us overeat. And I think this is one of the biggest problems that we have in these discussions is that we forget that we are not solely ingesting macronutrients. We are not just eating carbs and fats and protein. We are eating foods, okay? There is a delivery system to these macronutrients in the form of actual foods that we are eating. So for example, when we are talking about carbs, do we mean green vegetables like broccoli and lettuce? Or are we talking about rice and baked potato? Or are we talking about pure, plain table sugar? Or we are talking about pancakes and cereal and syrups and all those kinds of things. These are all technically foods that qualify as carbs, but I think intuitively we all know that the effect they will have on satiety and how likely we will be to overeat on them is going to be pretty radically different. For example, you could be eating some plain boiled potatoes. If you're really, really hungry, you might be able to eat a fair amount of them, but you're most likely not going to binge on them and put down several thousand calories worth of them. Now, if you're full from those boiled potatoes, what could you do to make them a bit more tasty and a bit more appealing so that you can keep eating them? For example, you could be adding some salt to those potatoes, right? It would kind of make them more tasty and you could keep eating them. But after some time, it would once again get pretty old. Then one thing you could do is add some butter to it, which would increase the palatability. It would give it a nicer mouthfeel. And of course, it would also increase the calorie content. So the damage per bite that you would do, so to speak, would be much greater. Then you could also do things such as adding some cheese on top of it and kind of melt some cheese on top of those potatoes, which is pretty nice, or some bacon. All of a sudden, you would create this food from those boiled potatoes, which are pretty plain and not super pleasant to eat, which is super, super awesome. And all of a sudden, you can eat a ton of those potatoes. And of course, we have the same sort of problems when we are discussing fat and protein rich foods. For example, I would agree that canned sardines or a fatty steak is pretty satiating. But cheeses, bacon, sausage, or also things like nuts and seeds and nut butters, I wouldn't say that they are super satiating in the sense that I, I could eat a shit ton of calories worth of them before I would actually feel like I don't want to eat anymore. So really, to anybody who is saying that carbs are about making us fat, for example, we could ask the question, has anybody gotten fat or obese by eating a lot of green veggies? Because those are carbs, technically. The answer would be obviously no. Now, someone could come back at this and say, it is the higher glycemic carbs that are the problem. Then we could say, well, has anybody gotten fat from eating too many bananas or watermelon? Those are pretty high glycemic. In fact, you could ask the question, if high glycemic index is really the problem, are you saying that eating watermelon is more fattening than eating Ben & Jerry's ice cream? Because believe it or not, the Ben & Jerry's ice cream has a lower glycemic index because of all the added fat. And then, of course, this whole argument can continue endlessly. Someone can come back and say after this that sugar is what's the real problem, not just carbs or not just high glycemic carbs. If you gave like a bag of table sugar to any obese person that loves eating sugary foods and told that person that, here you go, just eat as much of this sugar as you want, probably after a couple of bites or a couple of spoonfuls, the person would stop eating that sugar because it's just way too sweet and dense on its own. Anybody who loves eating sugary foods needs that sugar to be within some sort of a delivery system. For example, in a soda, dissolved, or in some other foods like pastry or ice cream or something like that. Nobody is eating sugar by itself. So of course, it seems like I'm being intentionally ridiculous and pedantic here, and that's true to some extent, but really my goal here is to illustrate that it is not the individual macronutrients that are the problem. It is not just carbs or just sugar or just fat. It is the actual foods that we are eating that are prompting us to eat more than what's reasonable or what we need. Anybody who's gonna get fat from eating either too many carbs or too many fats 
is ultimately going to eat a combination of these foods. Now, of course, this is bringing up the other issue, which is now a lot of people are going to say that, well, it's not carbs or fats that are the problem. It's the combination of those. It's eating carbs and fats together. That's what's making us fat. And then again, we have to ask the question, have you seen anybody getting fat from eating olive oil and sugar mixed together in a bowl and just eating that with a spoon and got obese doing that? Of course not, because that sounds freaking gross. Anybody who is eating carbs and fats together is going to eat things like ice cream and pastries and cakes and donuts and chocolate bars. And this, once again, brings us back to this fundamental premise that it is not just the macronutrients that are the problem. It is the actual foods that we are eating. So now we can ask the final question, which is the most relevant one. What is the common denominator in these foods that we are overeating on? And one answer is it is the palatability, which is these foods are simply way too yummy for us to control ourselves with them. And there is certainly a good deal of truth to this. It is just an unfortunate thing that we have to face in life that the more we like a certain food, the more we are going to eat from it, generally speaking. But there is another factor, in my opinion, that we have to address here, and that is the energy density of the foods that we are eating. Palatability is a factor by itself, absolutely, and we certainly have to address that, but energy density also comes into play. Because, for example, you could eat strawberries and some quark or some other low-fat dairy, which is pretty low-calorie, it's a perfectly viable fitness food, you can use it during fat loss phases and the like, and if you add some sweetener and some cinnamon on top, you're going to make that food tastier and you're going to increase palatability. But it's still a very viable cutting food and you're still not going to significantly overeat on them or not overeat on it at all because it is so calorically sparse. So yes, you increased the palatability of the food a little bit by adding that zero calorie sweetener and that cinnamon on top. But overall, you still kept that food very diet friendly, if you will. But what we are doing in our modern food industry is that the means in which we are increasing the palatability of our foods is also skyrocketing energy density. So how do we make foods tastier? We add sugar to it, butter to it, a lot of oils to it. So not only is it less satiating now because of the increased palatability, but it is also a lot more energy dense. So every additional bite of food that we take is going to create a lot more damage, if you will, because it just contains a lot more calories than it did previously. And so if I wanted to summarize the biggest issue with our modern foods and the foods that we tend to overeat on, it is the lack of satiety and the really poor satiety index of these foods. And that is a better term to use than just palatability because satiety already factors things in such as palatability because we know that the more palatable a food is, the less satiating it is. And then we also have things such as viscosity, density of the food, fiber content and protein content of the food. And basically our modern food is scoring much more poorly on all these measures than some food that you would find naturally in an ancestral setting, for example, such as meats, fruits, vegetables, and things like that. And of course, this is one of the biggest focus of my autoregulatory eating course, which I created to help you manage your nutrition and body composition without having to consciously count and restrict calories and just select foods in a way that allow you to actually naturally end up in an energy intake that will assist you towards your goals, whether it's losing fat or building muscle or what have you. And this is also something that I'm really emphasizing in this course, that we should forget hyper fixating on carbs and fats and protein. Really, the biggest question is, what are the foods that we can eat to comfortable satiety, make it possible to be satiated and satisfied in between your meals, not think about food, not be crazy hungry, and not feel like we are being restricted and deprived. Because no matter how well you're putting together a diet in terms of macronutrients, which is optimal on paper, if you're hungry and if you feel deprived day to day, then the whole thing goes out of the window because you're not going to be able to adhere. So to recap once again, don't focus too much on macronutrients like carbs, fats, and protein. Of course, you need to have a minimum amount of all of these, but that is not so hard to do. And of course, if you're training and want to build muscle, you need to get in a certain amount of protein. But overwhelmingly focus on the actual foods that will support you towards the goals that you want to achieve in terms of your body composition. Don't get too caught up in overly reductionistic arguments where carbs or fats are to blame or the combination of the two of them is to blame for getting fat because for every example that is supporting these points, you can find counterexamples that are directly refuting these points. 
So all in all, is it carbs or is it fats that is the problem or is it carbs and fats together? If you ask me, it's none of them. It is just a diet that is really poor in terms of how well it's able to satiate us. And we are just bombarded with foods in our modern food environment that is actually prompting us to eat more food instead of eating less food as we are eating more of them. So at the end of the day, we are still coming back to the fact that we just became too good at engineering foods, which are creating more motivation to eat more of them as we are getting deeper and deeper into a meal, as opposed to getting a negative feedback loop in the form of satiety that would prompt us to stop eating and realize that we've actually eaten enough to be satisfied and satiated. So that's all I had to say for today on this topic. Hope you found this informative and interesting. Like the video if you liked it or dislike it if you disliked it. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And with that, see you next time.